Good morning campers, it's winter once again. There's the snow tent. Uh, in previous years, we've made the mistake of putting our tent in places where there was just too much wind, such as too close to ridge tops or mountain tops. And in some of those videos, uh, we've focused on building a wall, a small wall around the tent. You may remember one video titled uh, Snow Tent Blasted by Spindrift. Uh, this year we'd like to focus more on selecting the right campsite. That is a campsite where there is almost no wind. For the last few days the wind has been traveling in that direction. Check out the nice view down there. Just have to crouch down here because the wind is coming back once again. So if I swing the camera around, you'll be able to see we're kind of camped next to this steep embankment which has been acting as a wind block for the last few nights back to the tent let's just go over and have a closer look as you can see we have of course built a small wall around the tent as usual it's always necessary because no matter what you do you will get a little bit of spin drift coming in so there's the vestibule pit where we do the cooking so <clears throat> because there's very little wind at this campsite uh, it's, it's quite a bit warmer and one new problem we've had because it's quite uh, hotter here is the ground underneath the tent has actually been melting so when we first set up the tent a few nights ago we had nice level ground but unfortunately now last night we were kind of melting downhill literally sliding downhill as the ground underneath us was unevenly melting we still managed to get a pretty good night's sleep but would definitely be better if uh, the, the snow was nice and hardly packed it's just the beginning of winter here so we've only got about 12 inches of snow on the ground to come back here in a few months and there'll be a deep Sort of one to two metre layer of hard packed snow at this location but just behind just behind that steep embankment there is another mountain top so if we were camped at the top of that hill the wind would just be ten times greater um, believe it or not there is a lot of wind out here just in this particular spot uh, we're nicely protected so that's what I wanted to focus on today from what we've learnt you know, over the years of being blasted by shocking wind up here in the Alps and spindrift, spindrift being sideways uh, wind swept snow that comes up under your tent fly. So what we've learnt is the most important thing is just selecting the right campsite. So regardless of um, snow craft skills like building a huge wall around your tent or even digging the tent in, you can't go wrong by just spending a little bit more time to find um, a less exposed campsite. I'll just take you over here. A lot of, a lot of other really nice spots to put a tent here. Plenty of fairly flat ground. Just over there, nice another nice little flat spot there, protected from the wind. So because the snow here is only about 12 inches deep, and we are on a gentle slope downhill. We had to move heaps of the snow. I'll just, we'll just go over here now and have a look at that spot. You can see, just there, that's where I was digging. So all the snow from that spot, I've had to move over to make the ground underneath our tent level. At least it was level for the first few nights. <laughs> We are literally melting downhill here. Just have a quick look inside the vestibule. There we are. Christina's packing. Getting ready because we are about to evacuate this campsite. There is a big snowstorm coming tomorrow. So, originally our plan was to trek out of here tomorrow. 
but I'm guessing that tomorrow morning this time that this whole area will be a complete whiteout. Another very important factor in snow camping is to check the weather every single day. And I actually do that for the entire three months of winter, even when I'm in the city. I'll be monitoring the uh, wind, snow, weather forecasts up here. Because clear blue skies like this, this is the kind of weather you want to be hiking in. You definitely don't want to be stuck in a whiteout. A lot of people die in whiteouts. You know, two or three people hiking together, you can, you can actually lose your, your hiking buddies. You, the person you're hiking with might only be 20 metres away, you won't even be able to see them. So in that situation, people actually have to tie a rope to each other so they don't get lost. And today, we're going to be trekking down that way, crossing a river, back to the car. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on another adventure in the Australian Alps. We'll see you next time. Smash the ice week, smash it. Come on. Can you help me here? You'll be right. Can you? Gosh. Oh my god. We have to smash the ice in order to make footholds through this river. Eventually you reach a point where you have to take your snowshoes off. <laughs> We're almost there.